There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away the pain. There's a new day to take away your sorrow. Out by the rain, darling, you've got to keep holding on through the night. Cause I promise you this if you try to get some. Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. How are you? How are you really doing? Like it's the middle of September, it's officially fall. The leaves are starting to change colors. The air is getting a little bit cooler here in Virginia. Thank God. I always look forward to this time of year in Virginia because the summer heat and humidity is out of this world. So we are quickly heading towards winter and I couldn't be more excited. Today, I thought I would take you guys along with us for a regular day in the life. As most of you know, the school year has started, so school is upon us. And it is really strange for me to say that we are in our fifth year homeschooling. I cannot believe that we have been homeschooling Parker for five years. He did kindergarten in public school and we took him out right after kindergarten and we've been homeschooling him ever since. So thoroughly enjoying it, still using Christian Light Education as our curriculum. Uh, but you guys know if you follow me on Instagram and everything, I did decide to delegate out science and history this year. So Parker on Fridays does a science and history lesson online. And then Monday through Thursday, we do language arts, reading, and math. So today is just a regular day. We're going to do school. And then we also have some packing to do because as you guys know, in just five weeks, we move to Alaska. God willing, right? In five weeks, we are moving to Alaska. We literally just booked our household goods shipment day before yesterday. So in just a couple weeks, the movers will be coming to pick up our household goods. So currently, Joe is, for those of you that have been following our um, journey with the military mandate. I share a lot of that with you guys. I've been keeping you posted. Uh, I posted on the community wall the other day that he received a written order to report to his base medical to receive the first dose of the you know what. And uh, basically threatening him that if he refused to do it, he would be disobeying an, a lawful order and would be in violation of the UCMJ, yada, 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 all the threats and stuff that they have been bringing upon these uh, members for over a year now since the mandate came out, even though they submitted religious exemption requests that were denied, right? So he is obeying that order in the sense that he is at base medical right now as directed, and he is going to ask to see the vial of the vaccine that they're trying to give him, he will be taking photographs of it and informing them that he is unable to follow that order. And after that, we will just take one day at a time and see where that takes us. But for now, we are moving full speed ahead with our plan to move to Alaska in five weeks. And I thought I would take you guys along with us here in the Watson household just to hang out on a regular day in the life. As you guys could probably tell, well, it's kind of dark in the background, but we have already taken uh, everything off the walls, decor, pictures, uh, knickknacks, all my pretties, and we've started packing. So we're kind of living out of boxes. Some boxes have been taken to storage, but the house is just kind of a shambles right now. I mean, that's like moving, right? That's how it always is. You have like this in-between stage where you're kind of like unsettled. Um, it's crazy though, because for me, the way that my home is presented, the way that my home feels is really important to me. And I don't really know where that comes from, you guys. Like my mom 
raised me and my siblings. I have an older sister and two younger brothers. She raised us by herself and we didn't have a lot of money, but she always had a cozy, uh, warm home. And so maybe that's where it comes from. It's like in all of the uncertainties in life and, and everything, especially right now that's going on, I like to come home like your home is your refuge, right? And right now, this, this apartment doesn't really feel like a refuge to me. It is a hot mess. So I'm just putting that disclaimer out there. It's, um, it's a little discombobulated right now. Good morning, good morning. P. Diddy, you going to wake up? You going to do school? Hi, babe. Good morning, CP head. <laughs> that is one thing I love about you, P. You always wake up with a smile on your face. Hi, Bubby. Hi. Did you sleep going? Yes, I love you. Love you. What you want for breakfast this morning, huh? Mm. Let me guess. An egg sandwich? Mm, oatmeal. Oh, oatmeal. Okay, we haven't done oatmeal in a while. I can make that happen. Yeah, with cinnamon and honey. Okay, I'm gonna get that started and you wake up, okay? Okay. All right, no falling back asleep. You okay. hear? Mm -hmm. All right, Bobby, I love you. <laughs> There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away. So today's devotional is the heart of the matter. Psalm 33, 13. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees every person. He made their hearts. He understands everything they do. When you put your hand on your chest, do you know what that thumping is? It's your heart. Do you know when it started thumping? After being in your mom's womb for only 22 days. Now that you're much bigger, your heart has a lot more work to do. It's grown to about the size of your fist. So if you hold up your fist, go ahead. That's about how big your heart is. God knows when you're frightened, worried, happy, or sad, and every emotion in between. And he understands you. No matter how hard life gets or how dark this world seems, God has a plan to help you, and he knows just the right way to comfort you. Check out this awesome promise. I am the Lord, your God. I am holding your right hand, and I tell you, do not be afraid. I will help you. That's Isaiah 41, 13. We were just talking about God being by our side, right? You see the heart? Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? I like got wires hooked up to it. Yeah. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you, for you have upheld my right and cause. Friends, I tell you what, I'm never surprised when I open the Bible and it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I can open the Bible and I feel like God just gives me a passage. Right now, my husband is sitting at the Coast Guard Base Medical Clinic being pressured into getting a vaccine that is against his sincerely held religious convictions. Joe's there right now. Like it was supposed to be an in and out appointment and he's been there for a full hour. So reading this passage gives me courage. Anyway, moving on. 
So for you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. All right, friends, so I'm here doing school with Parker, and I just got a call from Joe. He just left base medical, and um, it's, it's quite interesting. He went into medical and said, I'm here reporting. I was ordered to report to uh, receive my, my COVID vaccine, and uh, the medical personnel asked him, are you going to take it? And he said, well, I need to see the vials. He then asked the girl at medical to write up a statement, uh, basically recapping what happened this morning. She did and she signed it and I'm going to read that statement to you guys really quick. They're still going to process him for discharge. At least that's what they're saying. And he has people in his very office that are going through the same thing he, ha he has. And they've already received their notice of intent to discharge, written formal notice of intent to discharge. So it's kind of crazy, friends. I don't know. All I know is I know we're doing the right thing. I'm so proud of Joe. I can't even tell you guys because he is a quiet dude doesn't particularly like confrontation. And I prayed for him this morning and I told him before he left, I said, take a deep breath, say a prayer when you're in the parking lot and stand your ground. I know that there are multiple lawsuits going on and I know the lawsuits take time, but it's really hard in the interim for those of us that are actually walking through this right now and being threatened with being kicked out just a couple months before our deserved retirement. So. Anyway, that's an update from Joe this morning. He's on his way home. He's actually working from home today. So he's on his way home from base medical, but that's what happened. All right, so one seventh of 49 equals what? And we know to figure that out, we have to take the uh, 49 and divide it by the denominator, which is seven. So basically seven times what equals 49? If you can't remember, seven times what that equals 49, then what do we know about seven? So we have to go back to what we do um, know, right? Seven times six. What's seven times six? 42. Okay, so seven times six, 42. What's seven times seven? 49. 49. So the answer is seven. One seventh of 49 equals seven. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the next one we're just talking about changing over here changing a mixed number to an improper fraction by multiplying the whole number by the denominator and then adding the numerator, which we were just doing these yesterday. So we'll see if you remember, okay? So five and two thirds, how do we turn that into an improper fraction? So you're, you're making a fraction here. So you're correct. The numerator is 17. And what do we know about our denominator? It always <laughs> stays the same. Good job. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I'm just making myself some breakfast. Parker had oats this morning. I'm just keeping it simple, making some scrambled eggs. But I don't know about you guys. I cannot eat scrambled eggs by themselves. 
Um, it's not that it like grosses me out or anything. It's just boring, right? So what I like to do is add homemade sauerkraut. One, it's beautiful. Two, it's delicious. Three, it's really good for your gut health, right? And I'm actually already out of sauerkraut, so I have a whole nother batch going over here on the counter. If you guys have never had sauerkraut or uh, especially like homemade sauerkraut and you don't know how to make it, I will link a video for you guys here. It is just the easiest thing. It's literally cabbage and salt and you let it sit and ferment on your counter. Fermented foods are so good for you. So uh, I use purple cabbage. You don't have to, you can use green. Um, it doesn't matter at all. But this purple cabbage makes the most beautiful sauerkraut. I put some shaved carrots, onions, a little bit of uh, chopped up oregano and a good sea salt and this ferments on the counter and it is delicious, you guys. You got a big cabbage harvest. It's a great way to preserve the cabbage as well because this will stay good in your refrigerator for months. I mean, we've had ours in our fridge for up to eight months before and it was totally fine. So I'm gonna add some of the sauerkraut to my eggs and it's gonna make it super yummy. Makes it makes the breakfast a little bit more exciting. Oh my gosh, so good. For those that have maybe never had sauerkraut, it's a very uh, tangy, salty flavor. It's absolutely delicious. There's the man himself, the Joe. Can you tell us how you're feeling? Tell us how you're feeling, Joe. Fine. Yeah, feeling fine? <laughs> you look mighty fine, Joe. <laughs> kind of remind me of Braveheart, Joe. Mm, don't. Paint your face blue. Can you say it one time? Say what? Say what? Freedom. <laughs> like William Wallace did. You gonna have a little oatmeal with your honey? Daddy. Freedom! So how'd that feel today standing up for your constitutional rights today, Joe? Huh? Just like every other day. Okay, so time check here. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. We got done with Parker's math like pretty much a couple hours ago, but once Joe got home, we sat down and started drafting a memo to his command to inform them that we went to base medical to follow that order um, to report to medical, but we're unable to comply with their requirement. I helped Joe type up that memorandum, and then we did enclosures with pictures that Joe took of the vials. We are just now jumping into language arts. Parker just had a turkey sandwich for lunch while we were typing up the memo, but it is so crazy, you guys, the amount of time, energy, and research, and everything that has gone into this fight for the mandate, the vaccine mandate, over the last year since the mandate came out. Hours upon hours have been taken away from our family, writing the religious accommodation, typing up the appeal when they denied it, emails back and forth, just... It is crazy how much it has consumed our family's time. And it makes me sad because this is a time in Joe's military career that should be exciting. We should be celebrating this moment of sacrificing for 20 years to serve our country and he's getting ready to retire. And instead of being able to enjoy this moment and have, you know, be celebratory about it, they've stripped the joy from us. They've literally taken everything good about this moment and made it sad, really. And instead of um, being sent off with a farewell, Semper Paratus, thank you, job well done, um, we're having to fight just to be able to retire. So it's really quite sad, but we are trying to stay positive, you guys. I know I, I post a lot on the community wall and Instagram and Facebook, uh, things, thoughts that I have and things, you know, but I think that um, recently Parker and I were reading the book of Job in the morning during our morning reading time. And it was just interesting to me to see uh, even through Job's trials that he faced, he continued to love the Lord and to not turn his back on him. And I think that's really important even while we're going through all of this to try and remain positive and just know that God works everything together for good. So we're trying to remain positive, try not to let it get us down too much because at the end of the day, I don't care about a big, huge celebration. I don't care about a big going away party or retirement ceremony. And Joe doesn't either. We just want 
the freaking DD-214. We just want the pension that he deserves. And we want to go to our cabin in Alaska. Like you can keep your like goodbye lunches and your plaques and your shadow boxes and all the things like you can keep all that crap because honestly, the way that they have treated this man after what he's done for his country, we don't want that from them anyway. Just give us what is due. Give us what is rightfully ours and we will be on our way. So homophones are words with the same pronunciation. So they sound the same, but they have different definitions mm -hmm. and spellings. Homographs are words with the same spelling, but different definitions and pronunciations. So Can't this one this. says, write homograph or homophone to finish the graph. So you have pronunciation, spelling, definition, and then the term. So which one is homograph and which one is homophone? Mm -hmm. How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on? All right, so tonight for dinner, we are gonna make chicken and dumplings. We have a few whole chickens left from the homestead that we butchered last year. This is a nice six pound chicken butchered in May. Look at that, mm, meat bird straight from the property. So I wanna make sure to use these up before we head out across the country to Alaska. And so today I'm gonna to be cooking this chicken, deboning it, and we're gonna make a delicious chicken and dumpling soup for dinner tonight. It really makes me wonder. So, what do you want, adverb? Yeah, now I need to adjective. Okay, so if an adjective. adverb modifies a verb, what does an adjective do? What does an adjective? It modifies a noun. It modifies a noun. Describing word, right? Can you give me an example of an adjective? It would be like, my mom is, is so pretty. You took the words right out of my mouth, P. So pretty is the adjective, right? And then you could say like, my mom is super talented. My mom is a great cook. My mom has a lot of patience. All right, Parker is just about with about done with his language arts. His reading and stuff he can pretty much do like on his own. Um, oh, you're reading but. I was just gonna update you guys on a couple of things. So a lot of you have asked about the mold issue here in the apartment. I told you guys about that before we went up to the cabin in Alaska a few weeks ago. And uh, long story short, the apartment complex says that they had professionals come out, they addressed the cause of the issue, which apparently was standing water around the first floor apartments. Uh, we do get a lot of torrential downpours here in, Ala uh, here in Alaska, here in Virginia. Um, and so they put gutter, what are they called? Gutter additions, those things that you clip on there and it takes the water out to the road. So um, why can't I think of the name of them? Anyway, so they put those on there to pull the water away from the, the apartments. And uh, we had already cleaned all the mold out before we left for Alaska. I couldn't leave it like that. Like we cleaned the walls with bleach. We washed everything, had to get rid of some stuff. And then we did get a dehumidifier. Uh, I'm gonna link that for you guys in the video description just because it's been a great dehumidifier. And every day we get 
water in this thing. And it's kind of crazy to see how much moisture is actually in the air in the apartment. So we currently have that set back in the master bedroom in the closet. So for now, the mold issue is under control and the fact that we leave in five weeks. So I'm not going to move the whole family and cause a stink when we've got it cleaned up. We've got the dehumidifier. They've apparently done some things to try and remedy the issue that caused the mold. So for now, I think we're set. Um, and we're just gonna kind of push through the next five weeks until we get out of here. Another update for those of you that are keeping up with our journey of trying to get pregnant. I've had a lot of you comment and ask, which I love. I think that's so sweet, but we are not pregnant yet. So I will keep you guys posted. And you guys know as soon as it happens, if it happens, right? If that's in God's plan, you'll be the first ones to know. So we are trying to like while we're packing and everything, get everything ready for the trip across country to Alaska. You may remember from my last video, we found out some, some, I would call it bad news. The Alaska ferry system told us that this year's winter schedule, they are not going to be going through the Gulf of Alaska. So originally they told us they were, and we were going to be able to take the ferry from Washington state up to Alaska. Now, the only ferry that they have in November is going to be from Bellingham, Washington up to Haines, Alaska, which will put us just below the Canadian border. So now, unless they change it for the November schedule, we are going to have to drive through a teeny tiny portion of Canada. We have done everything, friends. I've gotten so many comments from you guys, some of you that live in Canada, some of you that just recently went through Canada, and it's actually terrifying to me how inconsistent the regulations are at the border. All we can do, which we've already done, is contact the border agents, make sure we've done everything they tell us we have to do, and then contact them again right before we get to the border just to make sure that nothing has changed. So... Um, that is really out of our control. You know, I have people telling us, well, you have to be vaccinated while the borders say no, as long as you're just passing through, which we're not even staying in Canada. We have a six hour drive through Canada, a small corner of Canada. So we're not even stopping. We will gas up before we hit Canada. We don't need to stop for gas. Like we are just driving straight through six hours. That's the, the only time that we're going to be in Canada. And the border agents told us as long as we have a negative COVID test result within 24 hours of arriving at the border and we're just driving through, we do not have to be vaccinated. We do not have to quarantine. I'm just saying what they told us. So the reality is they have been inconsistent. And uh, so we will not know until we get there what that's going to look like. But how tragic would it be if for some ungodly reason they turned us away at the border um, we would have to find another way to get to Alaska because it's not just us. If it was just us, we would just fly, right? It's not just us. We are driving our truck and pulling an enclosed trailer with all of our furniture and stuff in our household goods here in the apartment. So it'll be interesting, but, um, I, I think we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're educated on the process and doing everything that they say we have to do. So we just pulled all of the balcony garden vegetables out and pretty much got rid of all of the tubs and everything in the garden boxes. We kept them because we'll, we'll use them in the Alaska greenhouse, but uh, we're ready to go. We just pulled everything out. We were done. And um, let me show you guys what it looks like. It looks kind of sad now. Well, that's pretty much it. No more plants. Cleaned everything out. Ready to go to Alaska. So my chicken is boiling and there's a lot of different ways you can do this chicken and dumpling recipe. You guys, you can take just chicken breast and cook them and shred them, put them in chunks, however you like your chicken to be in your chicken and dumplings. But for me, um, usually what I do is I roast a chicken for dinner. We'll have like roasted chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy with a veggie and then the leftover chicken, I'll debone it and then I'll use that the next the dog, sorry. <laughs> I'll use that the next day for like a chicken and dumpling soup. But uh, since I don't have leftovers, I'm just boiling this chicken and we already packed the crock pot. Normally I would just cook it in the crock pot slow all day and then debone it to make the dumplings that night. But we already packed my crock pot. So I'm just boiling the chicken. You can air fry it. You can roast it however you want to do it. You just need chicken. And then I add an onion, one whole onion, and then several carrots, um, 
peeled and chopped. And then I also add celery to my soup and that's pretty much it. And we have a ton of celery left over from the Homestead property. You guys probably remember our celery harvest, me and Parker. Gunner. Their bones are so loud. Me and Parker had a blast harvesting all of our celery last fall. Celery, carrots, onions, chicken, and some delicious dumplings. That's pretty much all I add to my soup. But I will make sure to link the recipe in the description for you guys. I never felt tomorrow Closing in this fast, oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. While I'm on a one-way track, now I So I think while the chicken is boiling, we are going to walk the dogs over to the little dog park that we have in the apartment complex. It's really kind of a pathetic dog park. It's like just like this little fenced off area, <laughs> but it's better than nothing because we only have a balcony, so they don't really have anywhere to run and get out their energy unless we purposely take them to the dog park or to the lake or hiking and things like that, which we do with them all the time. And you guys, it is hilarious how many comments we've gotten about this breed, the Belgian Malinois. And just today, I got a comment from some psycho that was like, a really nice lady left a comment. She was like, those are beautiful dogs. She goes, that's a beautiful dog. It's gonna be great for the whole family. And this lady commented and was like, in all caps, she's like, no, it's not. That's a Belgian Malinois. Those dogs are high energy and you're gonna regret getting it. And she goes, it's probably gonna bite somebody and you're gonna have to put it down and like all this stuff. She's like, they need lots of land to live on. And I'm like, Okay, so hold one. First of all, we have 15 acres in Alaska. Is that enough land or is that like not up to your standards? And two, yes, they are very strong dogs, but they are also highly intelligent. These are the dogs that are used by the cops and our military. These are the best dogs we've ever had, you guys. They're amazing. And so I just commented back and I told her, wow, well, we went back and got his brother too. <laughs> so how do you like them apples? But it's so funny. People just think these dogs can only be owned by military and cops, and that is just not true. We live in this tiny apartment, but we purposely take them to the dog park, to the lake to go swimming. Bradley loves to swim to get their energy out. And by the time we get home, you guys, they are pooped out. They are just passed out on the living room floor and don't want to do anything. And they are not vicious dogs. They're not, it all depends on how you raise them. They're not being trained to uh, find drugs and to find dead bodies and to chase after the bad guy, right? So they're an amazing family dog. Does this look like a dog that would rip your face off? Huh, Bradley, tell them. Okay, I'm nice. I'm a good boy. You got water all over your muzzle, huh? Yeah. So Bradley's ears have not stood up yet. Between eight to 10 months, they should stand up and then he will look like his brother. Huh, Gunner? Yeah. You guys wanna go play? Do you wanna go bye-bye? Can you speak? Mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah, that's a good boy. Sit down, sit. Sit, good, speak. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good boy. Good boy. Gunner, speak. Yes, you're so smart. So Gunner is very stoic, focused, mature, and very serious about life. Bradley, on the other hand, is still in that puppy stage. He is a lover. You guys, he gets up in my lap and just snuggles into my chest, and he is the sweetest dog. They both are, really. But it's just funny. They're brothers from the same litter, and their personalities are like, they couldn't be more different.
That's it. Stay. Act. Stay. Act. Stay. Act. Go keep it. Come on. Go for it. Drop it. Bradley. You gonna hide it? Why? Yeah, go. Ready? Go get it. Ready? Go get it. Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Find it. Get it. Go get it. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, good boys. <laughs> Joe. You realize these are some dangerous dogs we have, right? I know. And it's really sad that they don't ever get any attention, you know? Any exercise. I mean, living in this small apartment, what were we thinking? Getting this breed. We should probably take lessons from somebody that's never had a Belgian Malinois. Yeah, we should probably take them to the pound and drop them off. Yeah. Bummer. Get it! Come on! Come on! Come <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Good boys. Good teamwork. Come on. Whoa! <laughs> what are you doing? Just one thing for a second. Mm-hmm. Gunner. Handsome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we have the chicken deboned and I wanted to tell you guys when you, if you boil your chicken, don't get rid of the broth from that because that's going to be the broth for your soup. So I just kind of take out any chunks that might have fallen off the chicken, check, make sure there's no bones and stuff in there. But I save all of that delicious 
homegrown stock that you basically just made as my soup base and then I wanted to mention too when you're adding vegetables you guys can add whatever you want some people like to add green beans and peas and other things but I just keep it simple um, and tonight we're gonna be doing like a garlic cheesy bread to go on the side of the soup and I know some of you might be like well garlic bread that's not keto so what had happened was um, so you guys know we were doing keto for like the last four months and our plan all along was to do keto for a couple reasons. One, we both wanted to drop a little bit of weight, and two, to kind of help us break some bad habits that we had gotten into with our diet. But our intention was, once we got up to Alaska, to kind of incorporate some grains and things uh, back into our diet. And one thing that I noticed with keto is I keep getting leg cramps and foot cramps, Joe too, for me especially, in the middle of the night and everything that you read about keto it talks about you being low on potassium low on magnesium so it got to the point where I can't take it anymore <laughs> I'm like so if I need to reincorporate some carbs you know good carbs back into my diet then that's what I plan to do because the cramps at night are keeping me up and um, you know I just decided to go ahead and start incorporating some grains and some carbs back into our diet but still keeping out soda french fries Cheez-Its, chips, cookies, all the stuff like that, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this soup going and then we're gonna make some cheesy garlic bread to go on the side. Why do you wait until okay. I'm done to start talking? People right. wanna hear what you have to say. You said we are gonna do keto until we went to Alaska. Right. Yeah, and we went a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be when we move up there, Joe. Why'd you put whipped cream on my coffee? 
You don't act like you don't like whipped cream. Everybody knows you, Joe. Such a hardcore man with his whipped cream over there. <laughs> I have talent. Show me. Have you seen? Show me. My monkey sound? No, not, no. Have you seen my elephant? I think I bring from like the depths of your gut, you know, because elephants are like a big animal. Let's see. <laughs> no? Yeah. Kind of, and then like a monkey would be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 